management of otitis media in children according to AAP guideline refer to the pediatric board study guide third edition ENT chapter for latest recommendations acute otitis media it is important for all pediatricians to be familiar and comfortable with the diagnosis and management of acute otitis media acute otitis media means middle ear effusion and inflammation as you see here in this slide this is the normal appearance of tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane normally is concave towards the middle ear and is easily to see the handle of malleus and also you will be able to see normally the cone of light. In cases of acute otitis media, the tympanic membrane will be full of pus and bulging towards the outside. Also, you will not see the handle of malleus anymore and the absence of cone of light. In addition, you will see the tympanic membrane also is erythematous. Erythema by itself doesn't mean acute otitis media except if it's associated with severe pain. Simply, if the child is crying, the tympanic membrane may turn red and will turn to normal color once the child is not crying anymore. About 80% of the children have at least one acute otitis media before one year of age. And 90% of the children have at least two acute otitis media by the age of three years. Most common bacterial causes of acute otitis media, streptococcus pneumoniae, non-typable hemophilus influenzae, moracilla cataralis, streptococcus pyogenes. Viral causes of acute otitis media, RSV virus, coronavirus, influenza virus, adenovirus. Very important to know that COVID-19 is not commonly associated with acute otitis media. Clinical presentation of acute otitis media, fever, irritability, cough, anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea, otalgia, otorrhea, hearing loss, frequent nighttime awakening. Also, it's important to know that acute otitis media may present without fever. In order to make the diagnosis of acute otitis media and to be able to see the tympanic membrane clear, as you see here in this uh, picture, you have to have a good quality otoscope with good light and illumination. This is the pneumatic attachment for the otoscope. It goes in this location to check the mobility of the tympanic membrane. In this case, because the tympanic membrane is under pressure, will be less or no mobility at all. As we mentioned before, red tympanic membrane without symptoms doesn't mean acute otitis media. Simply, if the child is crying, resisting physical exam may make the tympanic membrane looking red. Management of acute otitis media. Immediate antibiotic treatment for the following less than six months, moderate to severe otalgia, temperature 39 Celsius or 102.2 Fahrenheit or more, bilateral acute otitis media, and less than 24 months of age. In this slide, we have two options, either to start the antibiotic treatment or to wait and do observation with pain control. And I used it many times and it works. For example, if the child between six months and 24 months of age with unilateral non-severe acute otitis media or older than two years of age with unilateral or bilateral non-severe acute otitis media. If you choose to do observation with pain control, you have to follow the child within 48 to 72 hours. Initiate antibiotics within 48 to 72 hours if the child worsen or fail to improve. First line treatment for acute otitis media is amoxicillin. High dose, 90 milligrams per kilo per day, divided twice a day. Time 10 days. It has to be 10 days. Less than 10 days is not optimal for treatment of acute otitis media. Second line treatment is amoxicillin, clavulonic acid, or augmentin. Same high dose as in case of amoxicillin, 90 milligrams per kilo per day, divided also twice a day and also for 10 days. Indications to give augmentin to children who fail the first line therapy, children with increased risk of beta lactam resistance, for example, attending daycares beta lactam used within the past 30 days, concomitant purulent conjunctivitis. If you have a child with conjunctivitis and the acute otitis media, the most likely cause is hemophilus influenzae, and they respond very well to augmentin or amoxicillin clavulonic acid. Also, recurrent acute otitis media unresponsive to amoxicillin. Other antibiotic options in patients with hypersensitivity to penicillin. For example, azithromycin, sifdenir, sifuroxime, or ciftriaxone. Complications of acute otitis media, conductive hearing loss very common, tympanic membrane perforation is common as well, mastoiditis, meningitis, rarely brain abscess. Causes of recurrent acute otitis media, eustachian tube dysfunction, allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, 
or craniofacial abnormalities, for example, cleft palate, also daycare attendance. Recommendations to decrease the risk of acute otitis media, pneumococcal vaccine in children less than 5 years of age, annual influenza vaccine, exclusive breastfeeding for at least 6 months, avoidance of tobacco smoke exposure. It is important to know that prophylactic antibiotics are not recommended. Suggested follow-up after the diagnosis and the treatment of acute otitis media if it's less than 2 years, follow-up after 8 to 12 weeks. If it's less than 2 years of age with language or developmental delay, follow-up after 8 to 12 weeks. If the child is 2 years of age and older and no comorbidities, no language delay, no developmental delay, the follow-up will be in the next routine well visit. It is important to know the difference between acute otitis media and otitis media with effusion. Otitis media with effusion means the middle ear effusion, the tympanic membrane is bulging under pressure, or it has pus and the fluid inside. Without signs of acute infection, no ear pain, no fever, no cough, no other symptoms. You do not need to treat otitis media with effusion with antibiotic. It is estimated up to 90% of otitis media with effusion will resolve spontaneously within three months. So close follow-up is the most important step in cases of otitis media with effusion. 30 to 40% of patients will have recurrent episodes of otitis media with effusion. This is the most common cause of pediatric hearing loss and may cause language delay. The frequency of otitis media with effusion will decrease as the children get older. Management of otitis media with effusion. Observation. Watchful waiting. In children with otitis media with low risk of speech delay, hearing loss less than 20 decibels, monitor every three months to ensure resolution of effusion. Treatment of otitis media with effusion is meringotomy and tympanistomy tubes insertion, not antibiotic. Indications for tympanistomy tubes, bilateral otitis media with effusion for three months or more, undocumented hearing difficulties. Unilateral or bilateral otitis media with effusion for three months and symptoms likely related to otitis media with effusion. For example, vestibular symptoms, poor school performance, behavioral difficulties, ear discomfort, decreased the quality of life. Other indications, recurrent acute otitis media and unilateral or bilateral middle ear effusion at the time of assessment. At risk of children, for example, craniofacial abnormalities such as cleft palate or having only one hearing ear. With unilateral or bilateral otitis media with effusion that is unlikely to resolve quickly. This is the end. Thank you. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you, presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams, crafted by Dr. Osama Naga, a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a Last Minute Review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams!